the objective of this presentation is to establish a communication between PG admin for front-end GUI tool and PostgreSQL backend database server. First thing we do install PG admin 4. Enable Postgres SQL Server for remote connections. Then establish a communication between client and server. This is the client. Postgres SQL database server is my server. When someone talks of communication between client and a server, we basically need five parameters at a client side. What are those? You need a host name. That is a, this DB server's host name. Second, the port number at which uh, the database services are listening. What is the database name? Some databases such as Oracle calls this as service name as well. And the user ID password. Let's start with installation of a PZ admin for client tool. pgadmin.org is a website from which you can download the PZ admin for client. Click on download, then you can select the windows download here. And let's pick up the latest one. And I'm downloading the exe. It does not require any login. You see it's uh, the file size is approximately 75 MB. Once the download is complete, it just right click the exe and proceed with the default steps. Let me go to my download location. Generally what I do on my windows is I would install most of the time as an administrator. It's not really needed because I logged in as an administrator but as just a standard practice I keep doing the same thing. Now I right click on this PZ admin downloaded file and I'm clicking next. I accept the agreement. So it's saying that the folder already exists probably I practiced it before I actually did this uh, recording so that's okay uh, that's okay for me to overwrite because I, I kind of uninstalled it but forgot to clean up the directory clean up the folder but the installation is very straightforward it's just a simple next 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 steps Now if we go back to my basic steps, what are we doing here is we are doing the client installation on Windows. Now when we talk about this Postgres SQL server, I have server running on RHL 7.5 in VMware. I already have Postgres SQL installed there. It's just that it is not enabled for remote connections. If you want to understand how to install Postgres or how to set up a VM or how to install Red Hat within a VM or how to procure a new EC2 instance, pre my previous recordings would help in the same website or the same uh, channel. My previous recordings will help you to do that. Since the objective of this session is not to install Postgres, so I would be picking up already installed environment. Okay, the, let the client installation proceed. So I'll be starting my VMware workstation.
here RHL5. Let me resume this. So in the meantime, what I want to tell you is by default, Postgres DB server is not accessible from outside host. There are two files that we need to modify for establishing these external connections. Within PG data, you have PostgreSQL.configuration file. Within PG data, you have PG underscore HPA dot. There was there is other recordings that cover these configuration files, so I'm not going in detail. Within this, you have something called listen underscore address, which is a local host. You have to modify it to any host. Under PG underscore HPA dot configuration file, you have to add a line, for example, host level connections and uh, yeah you have to add the ip address here md5 before that it's worth checking see the default port number the default port number is 5432 so check what is running at 5482 using netstat command okay before i get into that vmware if you see the installation is complete so it is saying that should i launch this pg admin for i say yes <clears throat> so it, it opens a browser uh, where where i have an option to see if i have any already configured servers or it gives me an option to configure new you see it popped up a browser so it's asking me for some default password uh, I'm, I'm just setting up a new password here i have no servers configured but I will, I will configure the server by clicking on add new server. But before that, I need those five parameters, right? So for that, I have my RHL5 up and running. Let me connect from my putty. So if you see, my Postgres is already running. But the Postgres is only listening for connections at 5432 from this local address. I need to give it to a remote address. So what I do is, I would go to PG data. So let me get the PG data This is the PG data location If I go to this directory or I can do it as a root because I started these services as a root Configuration there is something called listen underscore address here. I need to modify this to star Okay, and P 
pghpa.configuration file i have to add a line at and that for all hosts for all databases for all hosts for all databases for all users in kind of request coming from any database this is fine i'm saying that um, md5 is an authentication so what this hpa file does is whenever any connection to this specific host comes rhl5 host comes it goes this line by line right you can also have an option to reset here Now what I need to do is I need to restart the service here. Let me restart. Now if you run this netstat command after the restart, you would see it is listening at listening for listening for connections from any external network. That means I have just enabled my Postgres SQL database server for remote connections. Now let me log into the Postgres user. Let me change the password for Postgres user. Sometimes we get confused. There is so much of a word Postgres in a Postgres installations because you have a Postgres as one of the default user databases and you have a Postgres as OS user you have a Postgres as database user these are two separate entities they do have a two separate passwords Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to change this Postgres database users password Whenever I Whenever I log into PSQL without specifying anything by default it connected using a Postgres user if you say select current underscore user The current user is Postgres the current database is Postgres so it's a lot of confusion sometimes but but once you get little familiarized with the terminology it all makes sense it's just for easy understanding they built like that now let me change the password for this default user now I, I change the password for this Now I, the username is Postgres. The database name I'm giving is Postgres. Now what is the host name? Host name you can get it from uname-a or hl5.local domain or you can ping this to get the IP address. Anytime. If you want to make a connection to a database server these are the basic five parameters you need from any front-end tool okay now we are ready for the step number three here in step number one we install pz admin 4 tool step number two we made sure our postgres sql database server is listening for external connections Step number three is establishing the communication between this client and database server. The client is PZ Admin 4 tool and PostgreSQL 11 DB server. Now let me let me go to PZ Admin 4 tool. If you don't have this already opened, you can you can go to the search bar and you can run this app
let me add a new server here psql 11 rhl 7 now let me click on the connection and give the ip address Hey, whatever the name I gave under generally just the name I felt this is the communication between RHL 7 which is uh, which is having Postgres SQL 11 you can give any name you want this is the host where Postgres database server is running this is a standard port this is the database this is the user ID and I'm giving the password save the password you see i clicked on save if the connection is successful it will show you on the left side like this otherwise it will say is unable to establish a connection or the respective error message communication error message You notice here on the left side what are the name we gave it here as a server it had it, it has got two databases postgres and test db1 but you see this into mark if you click on this it will try to connect to this test db1 database if you let's go ahead and create another database here There are two user databases postgres and testdb1 database testdb2 if you come here and refresh then you would see that third database as well but we haven't yet connected to this that's why there is a cross mark here in a red color if you left click on this greater symbol or arrow symbol then you would see the expansion on the database name. All right. Let me disconnect server. So going back to our agenda, we spoke about client installation. We spoke about database server readiness for client connections. Then we are able to establish a communication that actually concludes this presentation and its objectives thank you for taking time to watching this video looking forward to talk to you in the next recording